Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. And how many know that God wants us to excel in our walk with Him? Like God wants you to excel. He wants you to grow. Um, there's nothing worse than to than to see a believer who's been walking with him for any period of time and not excelling in their spiritual maturity. Uh, for example, how many here have been have been walking with God? Let's say you've been saved for anywhere from six months to three years. Six months to three years. Lift your hand. Six months to three years. That's awesome. Okay, great. Uh, how about uh, three years to three to eight years? Any three to eight years? Okay. All right. How about eight to 15 years, any 8 to 10, 8 to 15? Okay, cool. How about uh, 15 to 25 years? Okay, so we got a little bit of everything up in this place. But one thing I have noticed about Christianity is that you have people that have, have been walking on earth uh, for X amount of years, but my focus is walking with God. For example, I've been walking with Jesus for 22 years. I've been walking with Jesus. But there has to be some type of fruit of that walk of 22 years. There has to be something that says, wow, you've accelerated in your growth and you've, uh, you've, you've grown. And, and, and not only have you grown, but you've changed. You know, you're not the same person you were before you got saved when maybe you had an alcohol problem or a drug addiction problem or a cuss problem, a, a forgiveness problem issue but you're you're growing and you're you're going and growing and so one thing that i i desire as a pastor of this church is that we all grow in in the power of god because when you look at jesus as he was walking the earth he was modeling what we should be living and um, and i want to just talk to us in that in that thing tonight because you cannot possess, and you're going to see the first point, you cannot possess what you don't understand. And I'm going to say that again. You cannot possess what you don't understand. And sometimes you can be sitting in a service and not understand what's happening. And that's, that, there's only one reason for that. It's because you haven't grown in that area in your life. And so it confronts you. It, it, uh, it challenges you. And I love it when you sit in a service that doesn't uh, allow you to feel comfortable, but actually challenges you and convicts you to grow and, and go deeper with God, uh, especially if you've been walking with God for any period of time. Uh, whether you've been saved for six months or 20 years, we all need to keep excelling in this walk with God. But you cannot, you cannot, you will not possess what you don't understand. And I want to see our church understand the power of God. And how many know that years are not a reflection of knowledge? Knowledge is a reflection of what you're willing to put into God. And that's what God wants from each and every single one of us. So if you want to possess the power of God, then you have to understand Jesus. Think about Jesus. Jesus was on the earth for 33 and a half years, but only three and a half years did he actually spend walking with his disciples, walking with his team. And when you look at the scriptures, you see that Jesus was the man. Everybody say, he's the man. Amen. Jesus was the man, just like you and I, your man, one man. And, uh, but uh, Christ was the spirit in the man. And so what is Christ? Christ is, it means the anointed one, right? And so we know that Jesus was the man, and Christ was the spirit inside that man. And we know that because when you read in Scripture, and I'm going to go somewhere here tonight, okay? So stay with me because we're going to grow tonight. Um, when you see Jesus, he was anointed by the spirit. And then he goes public with it in his first conversation in the temple in church. He walks into the church and he makes it clear how he's able to be Jesus Christ. He says this in Luke 4 18. He says, and the spirit of the Lord is upon what? Me. And how many know that the spirit of the Lord is upon you? And he says, and the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. 
He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. I want you to understand this because you have to grow in this area. We have to grow in knowing the Holy Spirit because He's the one who anoints the man. He's the one who anoints the woman to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to those that are captives, those that are in bondage, and recovery of sight to the blind, those that are far away from Jesus, that just can't see that God loves them, that God has a plan for them. God says, I anoint you to literally remove the blinders off people. Do you realize that you have that kind of anointing on your life? That you can actually literally open the eyes of people that don't know Christ by the anointing that God's placed on your life. And it goes on to say, and recover your side of the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. And how many know there's so much oppression in this world that we constantly, uh, we, we come across people that are in depression, oppression. But Jesus was a man anointed by the Holy Spirit. And you and I, we are men and women that are anointed by the Holy Spirit to do everything Jesus just said when he stepped into the temple and made it clear to everyone who he was in the Holy Spirit. And I want you to understand too, when you read uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when you read those four books in the Bible in the New Testament, you begin to see that these four books were in chronological order of the life of Jesus. And so what, were, what was taking place in these four books? Let me tell you what was happening. Jesus was disciplining his disciples. He was helping his disciples grow for three and a half years. He spent time with them. He modeled power. He modeled love. He modeled grace. He modeled forgiveness. He modeled uh, 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 deliverance. He modeled for three and a half years. Think about it. They were in school for three and a half years, these were these were people that Jesus picked out of Peter and 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 a James and a Matthew and a Mark, and he said, "Follow me, and I will teach you. I will instruct you." What's what's a disciple? A disciple is a what? It's a student. If you're a disciple of Christ, you're a student of the Word of God. A disciple is not only a student, but he's a learner. Are you learning more about God? Are you learning more about the Word of God? Are you developing your spiritual maturity in the Word of God? Because that's the only way. Jesus is the Word, right? And so when you look at these books, it, it, it literally... Chronolog it's chronological order of what he did for his disciples for three and a half years of just developing their, their, their spiritual growth. He was disciplining him. But then you look at the book of Acts, and the book of Acts was finally the, the launching, the, the endowment of the power of the Holy Spirit. That was where they had to literally take the power that God left them through his son Jesus. He said, I no longer leave you orphans, but I leave you another helper. And so he's telling them, hey, listen, this doesn't stop. Now I want you to go into all the world. And I want you to preach this same gospel that I did. And I want you to go out and, and declare liberty to those that are captive and, and set the oppressed free and, and lay hands on the sick and see them recover. So here you have the 12 that were given power to go into all the world. And I love that because that's what we are here to do. We're here to go into all the world and preach the same gospel. And uh, the fact that is that there should be a growth and there should be a process and there should be an evolution to your walk with God. There should be a growth plan. There should, so many of us, we have goals, but we don't have growth plans. Goals are just motivators. But what's your growth plan in God? And not only do you have a growth plan, but you also have to have an evolution with your walk with God. There has to be a metamorphosis. Man, there has to be something deeper between you and heaven. And God wants to have that with us. And we today, sadly, we have churches and we have Christians today that are either very, very disciplined. Everybody say disciplined. They're very, very disciplined, um, but they have no spirituality. You know, like there's people here that you love to work out and you're disciplined at working out. Right, And that's awesome. I'm glad you do that. But there's no spiritual discipline. There's a physical discipline, but no spiritual discipline. And that's what church looks like. Or we have churches that are very spiritual and they have no discipline. And then we have uh, 
uh, churches that are so spiritual that we know that they speak in tongues, but in reality, they can't balance their own checkbook. I want to, I want to show you how far off we are when it comes to walking in this power. But then we have churches that can balance their checkbook, but they wouldn't know a move of God if it hit them right in the face. They wouldn't know. They wouldn't know what's a move of God, what's a move of the Spirit. And so we can be so off where you're either so disciplined or you can be so off where you're so spiritual and neither of them are earthly any good. And Jesus, when he taught his disciples, when he led his disciples, Jesus had a growth plan for them. And it was a three and a half year plan of growth. So that tells you how long have you been saved? Because in, 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 the, in the gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, that was development time. But once it came to the book of Acts, that was action time. It's time to take what you learned, and it's time to apply it, and it's time to see fruit, and it's time to see change, and it's time to see power. But how many know that God can never trust you with power until you are disciplined? How many want to walk in the power of God honestly? Yeah, the power of God. To walk in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so... The truth is that we, we, we should both rule the disciplined life and the spiritual life. We must rule both. That's why I love the, the video that what we did that of, of, of this little gal who's six years old and, and she's already being developed. And I'm sure her parents have, have shown her by modeling as they come to church, this is what it looks like when you worship God. This is what it looks like when you read your Bible. This is what it looks, and these are the things I'm talking about. And I know this is a very simple message, but I, 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 I feel like it's necessary for us to check ourselves and say, how is my spirit, what is my spiritual condition? Am I excelling in my walk with God or am I, am I, am I, decreasing am i increasing am i am i growing because i really believe that when you start growing in the things of god we can literally start breaking off some of the things that are on our life like oppression depression anxiety but when you don't know god when you don't know his word when you don't know his promise you can literally just be this christian this believer or we can be a church that's just emotionally driven and not realize that we have a holy spirit that wants to bring resurrection life that's what god wants for every single one of us and so um we're supposed to rule in the natural and the spiritual. We have to rule both, the natural and the spiritual. And my life is supposed to be in order naturally and spiritually, and that goes for you too. Let me take you to a verse here in Galatians chapter 1, verse 15 through 18. It says this. It says, but when God who set me apart from my mother's womb, now let me kind of just give you a picture. This is the apostle Paul, okay? Paul was obviously someone who was a God-hater, or a Christian hater, actually, and he was martyring Christians, and he was thinking he was doing God a favor by completely distinguishing any Christian, and he was giving the green light to whack anyone that was professing Jesus. And so now Jesus has an encounter with Paul. He throws Paul off his high horse, and there's this connection, this encounter. And so look what happens here. And so in Galatians, the apostle Paul later is talking to the disciples, and he's saying, hey, listen, I know you've never heard of me, but let me share a little bit of who I am. And he says, uh, but when God who set me apart from my mother's womb. How many know that God has set you apart since your mother's womb? But do you have the maturity to know that? Or are you just living every day just being a church attender, not realizing that God chose you before you were ever in your mother's womb? Before your mother and your father ever thought of you, God, God already had you in plan. You are already on his mind. Like there's not one person in here. I mean, do you realize how, how favored you are? I mean, think about it. Okay, birds and the bees. Let's talk about that. Let's go there. Right? Think about it. Even though your mommy and daddy wanted to have a child, no one said it was going to be you. You just beat all the other what? Exactly. <laughs> you went against all the odds. Think about it. There's thousands and then you made it. Wow. <laughs> Y'all get it? Do I have to go there? I want to be very careful. Some of you are like, 
I mean, just think. Just think. Like, out of all of them, you won. Talk about a fighting chance, huh? Talk about divine favor. So God already knew that you would be here. How special is that? Now, if you're hating and you're offended, well, everything probably offends you. That's okay. So I want you to think. So the apostle Paul is saying, God, God chose me. You didn't choose me. God chose me. God, God handpicked me. God knew me before I was in my mother's womb. Do you realize that, Katrina? That God knew you before you were, were ever conceived. Like, like you were already in God's plan. So that tells me that in heaven, God already had all of us. And he said, okay, let's throw out a little Mauricio Reese and see what happens there with him. And a little Virginia Reese and a little bit of the Carlos. And, 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 and he just started calling. And so that's what Paul's saying. So, and he says, and he called me by his grace was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. My immediate response was not to consult any human being. Look at this. So he has this connection, and the moment he came to Christ, his immediate idea was, you know what? I'm not going to consult. I'm going to get linked up, hooked up. I want to know God in a deeper level. That's amazing, huh? I did not go up to Jerusalem where everyone went for their teachings to see those who were apostles before I was. He says, but I went into Arabia, and later I returned to Damascus. Then after, after how many years? So listen, guys, when Paul was literally, when he encountered Jesus, when Jesus himself threw him off his high horse, the first thing that Paul did, he says, I got to get a grow plan. And he, he got alone for three years without any human, human being interaction. And he said, you know what? I want to know God in a deeper level. I want to know him personally. And he started seeking God with all of his heart. Why do you think God elevated him? Why do you think God literally allowed him to accelerate his, his, his ministry? Because he was willing to take time and to study himself to be approved in the word of God. That's why God will, God will trust you with power when you discipline your learning. God can't trust you with power if you're not disciplined in your learning. God won't trust you with, with heavenly wisdom when you're not willing to do the work. And so here you have the Apostle Paul says, and then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with, with uh, Cephas and, and stayed with him 15 days and so here you have the apostle paul he took time and and i and i share this scripture with you because i i i want to i want to challenge you as 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 a church and and as we're doing this elevate nights for you to grow deeper in your hunger for knowing god personally and and i love that we have church services and we have elevate nights and and i love the fact that we have podcast and we have youtube and we have all kinds of amazing things out there that you can learn but there's something amazingly unique when you can sit at the feet of jesus and when you open your bible and where you get manna from heaven directly from the throne room of god like directly and I'm sharing this because we have too many Christians today in this society right now in our culture that are spoon-fed that are spoon-fed every single word that are prophet chasers that, that are just looking for the next inspiring word that's gonna make me feel better about myself or my sin The word I have tonight is God saying to you and me, in 2019, I want you to separate yourself from me. I want you to go deeper in knowing me personally. I'm not saying stop going to church. You need church. <laughs> Without this church, you wouldn't have the information you need. But I wanted to challenge some people tonight. And it's a simple message, but this is what's heavy in my heart. We have to grow, every single one of us. Because when you grow spiritually, you, when, you, when you understand the nature of God, 
you won't be surprised by how he moves. You won't be surprised by a move of God. But when you don't understand the nature of God, you, you, you'll, you'll literally reject when God's wanting to move in your life in a very special way. Why? Because we, we like to box God and we like God to do things a specific way. But how many of that God's not going to move in the way you thought he was going to move? God's going to move in a very supernatural way. And you have to be in tune to the Holy Spirit because you just may miss it when God shows up. And you can't miss it. You can't miss it. So here's what I'm telling you. Tonight, I want you to go home. If not, first thing tomorrow morning, I want you to start writing down, how will you grow in God this year? What will you do? Well, let me give you some, some simple things you can do. These are simple. And I know that we have technology. I get it. I have technology. I love technology. But there's something that helped me memorize like, I, I probably have hundreds and hundreds of verses, Bible verses that I've memorized in my head. But let me tell you how it happened. I got three by five cards. And all I did every single day is I would read my Bible. And, and as verses stuck out to me, as verses, Bible verses spoke to me, I would start writing each and every single verse. And before you knew it, I would have like 15, 20, 30, 40 of these laying around everywhere. And then every morning that I would wake up, so I would have my word time, and then my prayer time would be this. I would be in whatever favorites. For some of you, maybe a chair. You know, for some of you, maybe in the shower. For some of you, maybe running in the gym. And, and you know what you do? You grab your three, five, three by five cards, and you just start reading every single verse. Every, and you know what? Here's what happens. You will grow up spiritually. The things that you're facing now in the natural you will overcome in the spirit realm. You'll overcome it. You'll overcome anxiety. You'll overcome depression. You'll overcome oppression. I get it. We should get help. We should have therapy. I get all those things. Listen, I'm not saying don't do that, but I'm saying I think that we have to go back to the source who created us, who can restore us, redeem us, heal us, right? Deliver us. But we have to get back to a grow plan. We have to, if you want, if you want the power of God, if you want to possess the power of God, then you must be disciplined. Jesus disciplined his disciples for three and a half years, and then he said, now go and wait for the power. And I want to see churches, I want to see people. I love the fact that we have mature people here that when I called this, this evening, I said, everybody meet me in my office. And now they all came with power. And they all came in. Thank you for those who prayed for me. I feel amazing right now. I'm telling you, there's something about that when you can call people. And so you start writing scriptures every single day. And here's, let me read you the last verse. Right the last verse, stand to your feet. Look at this. In Mark 16, verse 17, 18, it says, And these signs will accompany those who what? Believe. This is Jesus. Look at what Jesus is saying. Guys, please get this. I hope you get this. Because if not, we're just churchgoers and that's it. God doesn't just want you to go to church. God wants you to be the living church. God wants you to be the carriers of his presence. God wants you to not only carry his presence, but God wants you to carry his person. How, what do I mean his person? When people see you, they should see Jesus. God wants you to carry his power. And he says it right here in Mark 16. He says, and these signs will accompany those who believe. These signs, what signs? Miracles, signs, wonders, power. And he says, and in my name, they will drive out demons. I'm not telling you to go out there and start praying and casting out demons. But what I'm telling you is that God's saying that I'll give you the authority that any demonic influence, even in your house, you can walk in your house. And if you have you ever walked in your house and you get the goosebumps and you start feeling a little freaked out, like, oh, my God, something's in here. And you can say, you know what, devil, get the hell out of my house when you have oppression here. Get out in the name of Jesus. Fear, doubt, um, but man, get out. Man, what's wrong? Are you crazy? But see, but unless you believe, unless you have the maturity to understand the power that God has given you, unless you have been disciplined in the word of God, you won't know what to do when it comes knocking at your door. You'll cry about what's happening instead of take the God-given authority he gave you because you've taken the time to separate yourself, to spend time with the Father, and to get up and take authority over that spirit in your home. Amen? Amen. And so demons, he says, I give you power to cast out demons. Don't do that off your wife or your husband, all right? <laughs> get out. They will speak in new tongues. Mom, we pray. Stop fighting. Why is this church praying the spirit? Because it's in the Bible. That's why. 
It's that simple. It's in the Bible. If you weren't here for our 50 Shades of Pray, go back and watch the, uh, the live stream we taught on prayer. Verse 18, they will pick up snakes with their hands. Don't go picking up snakes. Okay, just snakes, obviously, he's referring to there, there are things that, that will come against you. There's uh, trials. Remember when Paul got bit by the snake, what did he do? He shook off the snake. God will give you the power to shake off junk that comes against you. When people are talking about, about you, instead of fighting them, you shake it off you. He says, I'll give you power to shake that off, man. It'll just, it'll be like water on a duck's back. It'll just roll right off you. I'll give you power to, to lift up, stand, be like, no, nah, this doesn't move me. He says, and when they drink deadly poison, what deadly poison? When people come and they hurt you, when people come to destroy you, when they come and give you a cup of poison, when they try to poison your heart, your mind, he says, you know what? When you have me inside of me, when my spirit lives in you, even though you may face and you will face those things in your lifetime, don't worry about it. It won't kill you. You're going to be just fine. How many have had a cup of poison? Here and there, right? Someone gives you a little mixed drink of crazy. It will not hurt them at all. At all. They will place their hands on the sick people. How about that? Look at that. And they will get well. The disciples walked in power after they were disciplined. Don't be so disciplined where you're spiritually no good. And don't be so spiritual where you're disciplined no good. Let's, let's rule both in spirit and discipline. That's why churches, that's why people are afraid to go to churches that are, have a move of God because they're so spiritual or they're too disciplined. God's word tells us that all discipline is necessary for training toward righteousness. All discipline. If we're going to live a righteous life, then we have to realize that it's all discipline. Spiritual discipline, natural discipline is what leads us towards righteous discipline. We need to get the discipline of Almighty God back in our life. Amen. Are you guys getting this tonight? We, we need this, guys. I, I pray that, that you and I, that we're the church that, that walks and rules in the discipline of the spirit and the natural, and that we know how to bring a word in season, a simple word in season when we need to, but we also know how to bring a spiritual word in season when someone needs freedom and deliverance. We need that. But, but you have to want that. You have to separate yourself every day, take time and get in the word grow deeper. As a matter of fact, okay, who's willing to do this? Who would want one of these right here? Okay. Who screamed that out? Wow. You, you screamed. Oh, my gosh. There you go. All right. There you go. Catch anyone else? Way in the back. Okay. Oh, I'm going to hit someone. This is dangerous. Can okay, then someone way in the back? I'll buy you one. A lady right there with the scarf right there. Can you pass this to her? Lauren, catch this girl. You got this. Come on. If you catch this, oh, my God, you are so disciplined. Yes. Listen, get, let's, let's, let's grow in 2019. Look at your neighbor and say, you know, we're going to grow. We're going to grow spiritually. We're going to grow. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to grow. We're going to do this thing. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to grow. You know, listen. Listen, don't, don't, don't be that person that you just want to be so disciplined and so I'm contemporary. No, you're not. You're crazy. No, you're, say, I'm a child of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 the Lord said, he said, you wait there because he says, once I give you my spirit, you know what the, do you know the, do you realize that the only reason God gave us his Holy Spirit was for us to be witnesses for him? Like you can't even witness Jesus unless you have the discipline to acknowledge that he lives in you. How many Christian believers do I have in here tonight? You have, you believe it? Okay. Okay. So, so maybe you need to, maybe you need to stop ignoring the Holy Spirit. That's dogged. That's like people ignoring you. Holy Spirit's walking with, do you know that he never excuses himself out of any situation you're in, good or bad, that he's right there? He's like, okay, what are we doing? Acknowledge him, Holy Spirit. 
We're, we're going to go take care of this business deal. Give me the words to speak at that hour. Give me this deal that I'm about to get. Do you, do you realize that the Holy Spirit will give you the wisdom from heaven on how to seal a deal? Man, when you're in trouble, when you're facing the most difficult, challenging moment, let's say someone's attacking you, do you realize that heaven will give you? The Bible says that a soft answer turns away wrath. You know what? We're so quick to just, we want to be the wrath. God says, no, listen, discipline yourself in my word because when the time comes and you face that trouble, God says that my spirit will have disciplined you so well that you'll come out with a soft answer and it'll push that wrath away. And those people that thought about suing you, hurting you, whatever, they'll be like, I don't know why I'm going to just leave you alone, but I'm just going to leave you alone. I'm telling you, it's, it's the wildest thing. Discipline. What did Paul say? I discipline my body. I, he says, I, I buffet my body. He didn't say, I buffet my body. Amen? <laughs> I buffet my body. I put it into subjection. In other words, I put it in check. When you have the word in you, you can say no to the Twinkie demon. Amen? Yeah, it's true. It's true because that thing will talk. Yeah. I buffet. I buff it. I buff it. I put it in submission. I tell it. Do you guys remember Sunday we were talking about submit? How's your submission? Well, guess what? You'll never know how to submit to God until you know how to be disciplined in God. Amen? I hope this helped a little bit. Awesome. Awesome. Good. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.